Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. And good morning and welcome from me on this All Saints Day. Uh, did you take part in Lightfest last night? Uh, for those of you who did, we hope you enjoyed it. We realise it was very different to normal, uh, but we hope that you enjoyed it and were able to have lots of fun whilst celebrating Jesus, the light of the world. Uh, as I said, it's All Saints Day today. We're going to be thinking a little bit more about saints and who they are, but we'll come to that later. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna hand over to Tom uh, to find out what's going on in our church family at the moment. So over to you, Tom. Well, a good morning from me as well. Um, as you can see, I'm buying these shoe boxes that we've been collecting, and we're going to be telling you a little bit more about them later and praying for them, the people who will receive them. But just one or two things to say about what's going on. Um, first of all, we had a great light fest uh, celebration. The uh, video of what we did is online and you may like to see it on the website. So do please have a look at that and thank you. Also to say, as I do from time to time, thank you each and every one of you who give financially to the work of this church, both at Christ Church and Emmanuel. It's really, really appreciated. And as we often say, uh, all things come from you, O oh Lord and it's of your own uh, that we give you. Last of all, to say that this Sunday is the final Sunday of our quarter to 10 Sunday prayers and then the online service. And uh, next week is Remembrance Sunday and for both of our churches, we're going back to a 10.30 service and that will continue on into the future. We're well aware that many from our church family and others uh, will be wanting to watch online so the Christchurch service will be live streamed. Um, so you can look on the website as you've been doing at the moment and they'll be the Sunday service for you. Um, I must thank the team who've been starting to put together the live streaming. They've been working really hard and I'm very grateful to them. So that's uh, next Sunday from 10.30 services onwards. Thank you, Tom. Um... As Tom's just uh, reminded us from next week, we're going to be meeting in our respective churches. So this means that this is the last uh, online service where Christchurch and Emmanuel meet together um, online. Um, but I hope the first song we're going to sing uh, will stick with us and remind us that uh, no matter whether we're meeting online like this or in our uh, two different church buildings, we're still part of the same family. We're part of the big family of God. Uh, whatever age we are, whatever our background, whatever things we like doing, we're all part of the same family. So won't you sing along with me? like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but god loves
Some of us have specs to wear. All of us have different families. Some of us are very loud. Some of us don't make a sound. That's because we're different, you and me. But God loves everyone He's made. God loves each of us in a special way. That's you and 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 you. God loves you. God loves you. That's you and you. So good morning, everybody. Um, just to say, we've just had a, a wonderful afternoon packing all the wonderful donations that you've all contributed towards our shoebox this, this, this year. Um, as you can see, this box is full to bursting. It's all ready to get sealed up and to be sent off on its journey. Um, I wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who's donated this year. I've been slightly surprised. We've done over 100 boxes, as you can see here, all full of goodies, all going to tell each child that they get, that gets a box, that they're loved and they're special. And so thank you so much. I'm massively encouraged um, to be able to have done this this year, given the difficulties that we have. As we always do, the most important thing we feel is that we pray for these boxes before they head off on their journey. So Tom is going to do that for us now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the work that's gone into putting these shoe boxes together. And we pray for them that they might have a safe passage to their destination. Lord, that even this year with all the restrictions, uh, they will not be stopped at borders, but will get to where they need to go. We pray for the children as they receive them, that they will give them joy. But most of all, that they would come to know you as their Saviour, Lord Jesus. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The children are completely overjoyed. It's a real celebration. So many smiles on their faces. Kids are so excited. Giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name. That's what this is all about. It's a wonderful way to enter into the Christmas spirit in its true meaning. Operation Christmas Child has grown hugely over 30 years since it started a small town in the UK. And has now snowballed into this enormous global movement. 
That's what I love about Operation Christmas Child. It knows no borders and knows no boundaries. It's all about sharing the name of Jesus Christ. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Lives are being changed. All over the world, it's brilliant. We come now to our time of confession, where we think back over the last week of the times we may have uh, done, said or thought things that will have upset God and maybe other people around us. So just take a moment to think back if there's anything you feel you need to say to God and to bring before him. And then if you join in with the words in yellow. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us save us and help us for failing you by what we do and think and say father forgive us save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us father forgive us save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1 and reading verses 1 to 5 and I'm reading from the International Children's Bible. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am an apostle because that is what God wanted. To God's holy people living in Ephesus, believers in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in heaven. In Christ, he chose us before the world was made. In his love, he chose us to be his holy people, people without blame before him. And before the world was made, God decided to make us his own children through Jesus Christ. That was what he wanted and what pleased him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, so in that passage, uh, it talks about um, either holy people or saints, depending on what version of the Bible you've got. Um, so we have a question for you. What do you think a saint is? And then a follow-up question. Do you think that you are one? So let's leave those questions up on the screen for you for a little bit. Have a chat with uh, the people in your home or give a friend a ring or just sit and think about it for yourself. What do you think a saint is and do you think you are one? I wonder what your answers were. 
And I wonder if they'll change by the time you've heard Tom uh, talking to us. So I'm going to hand over to him again now uh, as he thinks about what is a saint? So as we've been learning, this is All Saints Day we're thinking about this morning in our All Together service. But it makes us wonder, well, what is a saint? If we think they're just these super, super holy people like in this picture, then that's probably a pretty small proportion of all of us Christians. And it's a good question because, of course, Paul is writing in his letters to the Ephesians to people he is calling saints. And they would have thought as well, well, what do you mean when you call us saints? Because they would have thought of themselves as pretty ordinary. The town they lived in, Ephesus, was a big trading town. So because of that, there have been all sorts of peoples and cultures and religions. The town's god was the Roman god of Diana. That's the one the town council recognised. It certainly wasn't Jesus Christ. And they will be thinking, look, we're just ordinary people mixing in with society. We're not saints. We don't live in a monastery or convent. So what do you mean when you call us saints? Well, maybe the clue is in how Paul describes them when he says they are saints or holy people, as our version of the Bible says. The clue is in not who they are, but whose. Did you notice it when we had the reading? They are God's holy people. The thing that makes you and me a saint is whose we are. We're God's. So when we think about All Saints Day, we think those ordinary people in Ephesus, and us too, are part of that same bigger family of saints. And it's interesting, I remember reading in my Bible reader the other day about becoming gods. It's in Isaiah 45, and one of the American translations is where God says, um, I have given you a new surname, you're mine. And of course, surnames are things which tell us what family we're from. My surname's Weber because I'm from the Weber family. My father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather we're all Webbers. But when we become part of God's family, we get an additional surname. As well as the family on earth we're part of, we're now also part of God's family. So my name is Tom Webber, but I now have an extra surname because I'm God's. And the same could be true for you. It's interesting, I know one or two church leaders I've met over time talk with their fellow leaders and they often call them my brother, my sister. And they really mean it. When they talk to another leader, he's saying, look, you are my brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ. We are part of the same family. And being a family of gods, being a family of saints, doesn't just mean we sit around being holy. We've got a mission to do. It's to become more like our Heavenly Father God and to spread his kingdom to our community. And one of the best things for me about this is we don't just do this as individuals. God doesn't just send us out as lone rangers. In a family, we encourage one another. It reminds me of a big conference I went to a few years ago called Spring Harvest. I know a group from our church have been going every year. And I can't remember, it was about five years ago, at the end of a huge worship session where there was maybe, I'm guessing, say 2,000 of us in this huge, massive tent we used to call the Big Top. And what they did was they said, I want you to encourage each other. And the way you're going to do this is a couple of people are going to form an arch. They're going to stand opposite each other with their hands raised and form an arch. And the next two people are going to go through that arch and form another arch. And gradually, as people went through and formed an arch, you'd build a tunnel and everyone would go through that. And the idea was, 
as you went through the tunnel, the people in the arch with their hands up would shout Christian encouragements to you. And when they started, I thought it was a bit strange until I got to my turn to go under the tunnel. And as I did, it was the most amazing experience. People I'd never met, but as Christians were saying, you keep going, you're one of God's, come on, live it out, you've got this, and all sorts of phrases. And it was the most amazing experience. And I remember not only being encouraged, but when I got to the end and I became one of the arches, I was able to encourage other people I'd never met. You keep going, I shouted. You're one of God's. You know that and you live it out. Part of being God's family. And using the phrase we're using in church, we are living God's love. We are living it, we're living in God's love. We're learning what it means that God loves us. And also we're living it out as we take the love that we've been shown and show it to others. So perhaps this All Saints Day, let's think about being God's holy people. And maybe one of the aspects of that is encouraging one another. You keep going now. Just imagine you're in the arch and there are people underneath who are coming through. Who could you find and who could you encourage? And what would you say? That's a wonderful picture, isn't it, that Tom uh, talked about there of um, going through an arch of people, a tunnel of people calling out encouragement uh, to the others as they walked through. Um, our next song reminds us that of that importance of standing together, that we can stand strong and stand firm in our faith and live out God's love when we do this together and encourage each other to do that. Uh, so perhaps you might like to stand uh, and uh, as we sing this song. Strong. 
Tom talked about one of the important ways of standing together is being through encouragement and encouraging one another. Uh, and earlier this week, um, I had a little chat with Doug about how uh, he had felt encouraged by others at different times in his life. So we'll watch that interview now and then the Crockett family will lead us in our prayers. So as we've been hearing about this morning, um, we've been thinking about encouraging each other um, and that we've been encouraged by uh, saints in the Bible and saints through history, but also that we're all saints and we can all be encouraging each other. So I've invited Doug here uh, to have a chat with me about how he's been encouraged by other people. So, hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so we're thinking about encouragement. Um, can you think of times that people have encouraged you? Yeah, it's, when you when you think back, it's surprising, you know how you know how many times in, in different ways that you have been encouraged, and uh, life groups uh, or, or home groups as as I know it, um, you know they they they've been invaluable, right? And um, especially when we had our two boys growing up, yeah, um, our home group leader. Um, you know they they were really encouraging, Brilliant. and you can and because they already had you know family of their own, right? You know they was able to um, you know say we was doing the right thing, yeah. and, um, and 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 encourage us if 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 it's something a bit difficult, yeah. You know um, come come in our way. Yeah, that's that's great. It's a really important thing to be able to pass on things mm. that we've learned to those coming behind us. Is there um, ways that people encourage you now? People, um, I suppose just thinking back from when I was being a warden. Yeah. Um, you know, people encouraged me to, you know, to, to say yes to be to be a warden. Mm. You know, because I was definitely um, at my comfort zone. Right. And uh, so, so it was really, really, you know, really good that the leader team. And the people in the congregation um, after uh, after the service on a certain Sunday, you know, they would come up and say, you know, well done, now, you know, you're doing a really good job. Right. Uh, so you know, so that was you know really good. And then, like I said, you know, uh, doing that role, you know, it was definitely out of my comfort zone. You know, so having people, uh, you know, say those things, it gave me the, the positive. Uh, to, to carry, carry on with you know, what, what I was doing. And you did do it very well, I'm sorry, I'm going to say <laughs> that, that, that now, because you did do it very well. Um, any other times you want to share? Um, well, uh, off the top of my head, so they were the two key, uh, key things, but uh, going back to, to home life groups, mm -hmm. um, you know, re reading the Bible and, uh, and, and getting and having encouragement from the, from the Bible, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, you know when I when you ask the question and you sit and you, and you reflect on it, and, uh, and it's surprising how much the Bible um, come, comes out yeah. in, in this conversation as well. That's great. So, how does it make you feel when you've been encouraged by someone? It just just um, just makes you sort of stand not nine feet tall, <laughs> and um, and, it, and it, it's one of those things. That um, you know, um, I feel that you know I should I, you know I should do it more often to other people, you know, as well as people that you know have done it, that they've done it to me in the past. Oh, I would say that you do. <laughs> I would say that you're an encourager, but yeah, we can all learn from that and all do to others because yeah. it does make us feel special, doesn't it? When oh yes, and it helps us. I'm thinking of when, like you say about being a warden, that you might not have taken that job without the encouragement exactly. of people around you yes. and, and you'd have never known that actually yeah. with God's help and the people around you you could do that job yeah. so yeah yeah well, that's great yeah thank you for sharing all of that that's that's really good and thank you very much for sharing that for us yeah thank you very much think of a family let us pray Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Lord Jesus, you call us to be saints, a light to the world. Help us to be like the stained glass windows with the pictures of the saints of old, allowing the light to shine through us, to illuminate the world around us, 
to shine into the darkness. As your word says about you, Lord Jesus, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you accept us as your family through your everlasting grace, that you understand and know that we are not perfect, but as your children, we are learning, growing and trying to listen and find your guidance to bring your love to the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our church family at Christ Church. Help us all to be more like you, to encourage and support one another as you did your disciples, sharing with each other in the good and the bad times. And whilst acknowledging our differences, being united in the fact that Jesus is Lord. Amen. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Zach, Sam and Darren, for leading us in our prayers. We're going to stay with that theme of encouraging each other as we sing our final song. I know we can't hear each other, but I want you to stop and imagine and think of all the people who are watching this video around the town of Weston and maybe even further afield singing this song as an encouragement to each other. It's one of those where the women sing one bit and the men sing another. So the women start by singing an encouragement to our men of faith and then the men are going to sing an encouragement to the women as they live for God and then we'll join together in singing an encouragement to each other to rise up as the church of God. Uh, so let's sing and encourage each other with this song. to invite you to join in um, with these statements um, uh, that are going to come up on the screen. 
Uh, I'm going to say the words in white and if you join in with the words in yellow, which are the words we remember. So even for our youngest one, maybe they can't read yet. Those are the words I want you to join in with. We remember. We remember the saints of long ago. We remember. We remember that we are the saints of today. We remember. We remember that we are surrounded by all the saints. We remember. We remember that we are part of the family of God. We remember. Uh, let's pray. Thank you for the church family here and in other places. Thank you that this family goes back a long way and that we are part of the family story. We know who we are and we know whose we are. Help us to learn from what has happened in the past and to encourage each other uh, to live for Jesus and live out God's love. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us today and always. Amen. <laughs>